Hello, my name is Sarah Swanson and I am an attorney with the Thomas and Swanson and Zahn Law Firm in Park Rapids. We have been sharing with you over a series of segments in this Wellness for Life series about our elder law, estate planning, as well as our geriatric care management services. We've shared about what a geriatric care manager is, uh, a, a licensed social worker or nurse who is trained and certified as a geriatric care manager to work with our elderly clients. And we just want to make sure that people understand that uh, geriatric care management most often is appropriate for our elderly clients. Some of our clients need legal services as well as geriatric care management services. And some people contact our office and work with our office strictly just for geriatric care management services, such as a geriatric care manager attending a doctor appointment or assisting with obtaining necessary services in their home. The way that geriatric care management originated several decades ago was in the case of injuries, personal injuries, and situations like that where a younger person was facing an entirely new and different life situation. So our geriatric care management services are offered not only for elderly but for anyone who needs care management services. Our office can assist with the legal services that are associated with those needs as well such as disability planning. Roger, can you share with people about the disability services that we can help people with? I'm going to talk about supplemental needs trust, a special needs trust, and an ABLE account. These are three different types of plans that can work for a person with disabilities. When the disabilities are such that the person is not able to be gainfully employed sufficient manner to uh, take care of all of their needs. When that happens, oftentimes they are eligible for government programs such as SSI. Those government programs, however, restrict the amount of assets that a disabled person can have, usually to two or three thousand dollars. And if you only have two or three thousand dollars and you're getting only SSI income, which is six or seven hundred dollars a month, that doesn't leave very much to uh, a person to have a decent uh, lifestyle. And so sometimes the family members or others will want to set some money aside for the disabled person. In that case, with a supplemental needs trust, a special needs trust, or an ABLE account, the assets in those accounts are not counted as assets for purposes of qualifying for government benefits. So you can have more assets and use them as you choose to provide just a little extra for the disabled person. A supplemental needs trust is a trust formed with the assets of someone else. So maybe grandpa or grandma wants to set some money aside. A special needs trust may take place perhaps when a person is injured and receives a settlement and so it's their own money. And an ABLE account just recently made uh, available in Minnesota is an account into somewhat like a 529 account or an IRA into which people can put money uh, slowly over time and the advantage of an ABLE account is that the client has a little bit more control over the money. With a supplemental needs trust or a special needs trust the use of the money is carefully restricted. Nevertheless any of the three can help just give the disabled person a little bit extra to live on during their life. Thank you, Roger. So if you or a family member has a disability and any one of these options sounds like it may be beneficial to you, please give us a call. We would love to help you out.